Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here and welcome back to the railway. This year both Hornby and Rapido have released a model of the same obscure prototype. And today, for the first time, I have both models together. I'm going to be comparing them, I'm going to be revealing which one, if any, you should buy, and which one you should leave on the shelf. <laughs> Today's models are the Laureate Y wagons from the Great Western, and in real life only two of these vehicles ever existed, which makes them relatively obscure. It is then very strange that we see two manufacturers producing the same model at pretty much the same time. There is of course a story behind that, and we'll get onto that later on, but there we have it, that is what happened. The fact that there was only two of these though means that I think there's going to be very limited demand for these models. No modeler is going to be putting a rake of 30 of these together. Realistic modelers are only going to be buying one, maybe two of these things at the absolute most. So if you've got two choices and you're only going to be buying one, maybe two of these models, it's worth knowing what their differences are and which one is worth buying. So that is what we're going to be figuring out today. So here they are. We've got a Hornby Laureate Y and a Rapido Laureate Y. I'm not entirely clear on what the differences between these two models are, and that's what I'm very curious to find out today. I can tell you one thing that they have in common though, and that is the price. Both of these models seem to be extremely expensive for what they are, given the size of the model, given the relatively limited complexity by the looks of things of the models, and also given what other manufacturers like Dapol and Oxford, for instance, have been able to offer for much less than this. So let's talk about the price first of all. Hornby's Laureate was the first one to arrive, and on Hornby.com the RRP is £46.99 nearly £50 for an obscure wagon of which only two existed in real life. That is crazy. Can't find this available at Hatton's, but at the Model Centre, a retailer, these are available for £42.29 at the moment. An awful lot of money. Now, Rapido are known for their prices, of course. They are known for being incredibly expensive, but the price of Hornby's Laureate is so incredibly ludicrously high that Rapido have actually been able to undercut them significantly. So here is Rapido's model, and on Rapido's website, the RRP is £39.95, so around £7 cheaper, something like that. And I bought this one from Hatton's for £33.96, and I've got affiliate links in the description if you're interested. So we've got the situation here where Hornby's model is around 20% more expensive than Rapido's, so that's significant. I am then expecting to see 20% worth of extra value in Hornby's model over Rapido's. Do you think we'll see it? Well, let's find out. So what an interesting situation this is. We've got two models of exactly the same prototype released at almost exactly the same time. So it's not as though we've even got a number of years separating these two models, which you could use to explain their potential differences. Both frightfully expensive, but one more so than the other. That is the Hornby one. So let's start off with the most recent release. This one's just come out. This is the Rapido Laureate Y. And like I say, this model is 20% cheaper than the Hornby one. So we're going to have a look and see what the benchmark is for this. And then we'll see how the Hornby one improves on it, hopefully. Let me show you the end of the box then. So the product code I've got is 917002. It is the Laureate Y number 41990. And that's all the box tells us. Is there anything to see on the back? No, nothing special. So let's open this up and see what this is like. I have to say... This Rapido box feels a lot lighter than the Hornby box. Um, that could be an illusion because it's also a lot smaller. Could indicate that this is the lighter of the two models. I will, of course, weigh both. Okay, so life is full of surprises, and you may be surprised to see that our factory managed to fit the tie-down points instead of supplying them in a separate bag. We hope that you will put the time and effort this has saved you to good use. Enjoy playing trains. Great. I do like to see that. Expensive models... They should be assembled, if at all possible. Unless, of course, it obstructs the running. Hopefully that doesn't here. Okay, Laureate Y tie-down points. Um, this might not be relevant, but there it is anyway. 
and the little rings through which chains or ropes were threaded in order to secure whatever the wagon was carrying. Okay, well, I'm glad that we don't have to do this because it speaks of using a very fine pair of pliers or tweezers, threading hoops carefully through plastic tie-down points. Yeah, frankly, I don't think there's any reason why the factory couldn't be fitting these at all. It's a very expensive model. They're not down near the wheels or the chassis, so there's no reason why that couldn't be done at the factory. Good. And then on the back of this, we've got some information on the Great Western Laureate, which is really lovely to see. I do love how Rapido, even though these things are just wagons, they actually go to the trouble of telling you all about the thing in real life, which is great. Let's have a look at the model then. Rapido, obviously known for their fantastic paint jobs. So hopefully we're about to get a look at that. Once I remove the plastic. Oh. Oh, it's all wrapped up in the plastic. Hang on then. And here it is. Yeah, the finish looks to be excellent on here. The decoration is quite simple, as we're going to see later on, but it has at least been done to a high standard by the looks of it. The wagon is fairly lightweight. Yeah, it is all plastic on the top here. These parts all seem to be plastic. On the underside, you can see these cross bracings here. These are metal though, and I guess that's where most of the weight of the wagon comes from. We've got nice metal wheels on here, which are fitted into proper bearings, which is really good to see. And as a result, they spin nice and freely. Yeah, there does seem to be some complexity in this wagon, particularly in the brake rigging where the wheels are and such. Apart from that though, it's a very simple plastic wagon. Quite why this cost 35 pounds, I have to say, I am not sure. I'm certainly glad that these rings were pre-fitted from the factory because having paid all of that money and then having to fit those yourself would have been quite unreasonable, I think. But yeah, I suppose apart from the price, perfectly serviceable wagon. The weight is light, but doesn't seem to matter. It's going to have a very low center of gravity, so it should be stable on the track. Weight, not all that important. But how does Hornby's compare? Let's find out. Remember, we are looking to see a 20% increase in the value of this wagon in order for them to be considered equal in terms of value for money. Very, very interesting. Right, let me show you the end of the box, which does give us more information than Rapido's did. R60101 is the product code. This one is in a BR livery. It is a machinery truck. Laureate Y, and it's number 41990. So yes, it is even the same running number. Okay, right, well, let's pull this out. Larger box, as you can tell. So hopefully the price difference is not just uh, because of the shipping cost increase. Right, so there's no paperwork, no background on the model at all. And the cheaper Rapido wagon obviously did give us the little booklet telling us about the prototype. So yeah, one down already. Let's pull this out. Have we any accessories? No. So again, like Rapido's, it would seem that everything is already fitted onto this wagon. Okay, let's open this up. I can already see a significant difference because we've got wood colored planking on the deck. Now, I've looked up the laureates in real life. Um, the preserve one does not seem to have this wood colored planking on it, but then again, it's probably been outside for a good number of years. So maybe when these were new, they would have had this sort of polished wood look to them. I'm not going to sort of judge either way, but if you've got uh, any thoughts on that, please do let me know. All right, let's lift this up. All right, noticeably, this is a much heavier wagon right from the offset. So yeah, whereas the Rapido body was just made of plastic, this model is made of metal, making it much, much heavier. Now I have to say, this model feels a lot better in the hands than the Rapido one did. That felt really light. This one feels good and chunky. Is that absolutely necessary? Ah, I'm not really sure. I mean, like I say, this is gonna have a low center of gravity. Would it be fine made of plastic? Yes, I think so. But it is lovely that this is made of metal. And sure, in my opinion, that is a good reason why this should cost 20% more than an equivalent model made of plastic. Having said that though, nearly 50 pounds for this, or you know, over 40, still ridiculous, isn't it? Anyway, underneath, Quite similar looking really, although we do have visible screws on this one, whereas we didn't on the Rapido one. Noticeably, the brake rigging is less detailed on this as well. It's still here, 
but it's not quite as detailed. And uh, we also don't have the bearings on the wheels here, so these aren't quite as free to turn by the feel of it. Although later on, I will test these on Gordon's Hill for you. The other weird thing about this Hornby one are the couplings. They're not sprung, they are free to pivot, but they don't spring back to the center. So that's awful, you know, that's terrible. You're gonna have to straighten up the couplings before you'll be able to couple these together. They've actually used a springing coupling. It looks like the similar sort of type that we see on Hornby's traditional wagons, but they've just nibbled off the little bit of plastic which does the springing uh, because obviously it would be visible. So we've just got these floppy couplings that uh, don't spring. That's just ridiculous. And then the Rapido ones look quite similar, but uh, they do spring. There's a little bit of plastic that is nice and thin and allows the couplings to spring left and right. So there we have them, the two wagons. We have the Rapido one, which is cheaper, lighter, but has bearings and functioning couplings. And then we've got the Hornby one, which is significantly more expensive, but it is higher quality in the fact that it's made of metal, but it doesn't have the proper bearings on it and the couplings are not properly sprung. So it would seem that both models are scoring and losing points in different areas which is the actual best, which one you should go and buy, is not entirely clear at the moment. So I think more investigation is required. I'm going to weigh these, talk about the weight difference, and obviously we're going to look at the level of detail too. But first of all, let's talk a little bit about the Laureates in real life, and also how it came to be that we have two of these models arriving at the same time in double O scale. Although the Laureate wagons were introduced in the 1800s, the model we see here today is a 1937 design known as the Laureate Y, and as I said earlier on, only two of these were ever built. The fact that so few ever existed makes them relatively insignificant, except for the fact that one of them appeared in the Titfield Thunderbolt film in 1953. This explains why Rapido would want to create such an obscure wagon, as it forms an important part of their officially licensed Titfield Thunderbolt range. But why would Hornby want to produce such a random wagon with potentially limited appeal? Well, as you may remember, Hornby also announced a Titfield Thunderbolt range, for which this wagon was presumably designed to be a part. However, Hornby failed to obtain the necessary permissions and licenses to produce such a range, and therefore they were forced to cancel their range as a result. In June 2022, Hornby issued a rather embarrassing statement which acknowledged that the rights to the film were owned by Studio Canal and that all Titfield theme packs were cancelled. However, Hornby had already developed and invested in some of these wagons, and both the Lion locomotive from the range and now of course the Laureate Y have been released without the Titfield branding, which of course they are perfectly free to do. It does mean though that we are now in the bizarre situation where Hornby are demanding almost £50 for a model of something of which only two existed, and they can't even market it as an object from a famous train film. Okay, let's talk about weights then. Now, I have to say, now that I've held both of these models in my hands, the Rapido one really does feel insanely cheap and nasty in its plastic construction compared with the Hornby one in its die-cast metal construction. That's a very, very noticeable difference. But let's see what they actually weigh. So here comes the Rapido one, which comes in at 20... Uh, I've settled 25... It's changed the moment I said this is settled. 26 grams, okay, you can have the extra gram, which is really nothing. How is this a 40 pound model at RRP? This thing cost me 35 pounds and that's an awful lot. I mean, the cheapo Airfix Lomac things, they are about 10 grams more and uh, they're really cheap and nasty things. So yeah, the, the weight of the Rapido one kind of sucks. The Hornby one is quite surprising as well. Look at this. 58 grams, that is more than double Rapido's. Now, that is not necessarily the result I was expecting before I started this video. I thought, you know, they're both ludicrously expensive, but Hornby's is so much more ludicrously expensive. I thought Hornby's would be the one that came out looking bad from this. Actually, it isn't. I think, ultimately, they're both ridiculously overpriced, aren't they? But 
for just a few pounds more, you can get more than twice the model. Yeah, this one really does feel cheap and nasty. Is the weight really that important? Probably not. Is it going to make much of a practical difference on the track? No, probably not. But in terms of what I prefer, nice weighty model just for a few pounds more really, double the weight. Yeah, that's probably the better value one actually, isn't it? But there's more to this. Let's take a look at the difference in their detail. Together, both of these models represent an investment of nearly £80 for me. Over £80, actually, if you include the postage. And frankly, I'm not particularly impressed by either of these models. Both of them have some very odd design decisions which have gone into them, and those decisions just kind of get in the way of the model, in a way. But let's talk about the decoration and the paintwork. In terms of the finish, I think the finish of both models is pretty good, but you just can't beat real metal, so I think Hornby gets the point there. In terms of the decoration, obviously they are quite different because the Rapido one is in a Great Western livery and the Hornby one is a BR livery, so they're a different colour, different printing, but the quality of the printing is equally high on both, I would say. You have, of course, got the odd wood planking effect on the Hornby, which the Rapido one doesn't have. It's not entirely clear which one is correct, but I will say the quality of the wood planking doesn't look very good up close, whereas the Rapido one looks absolutely fine because it doesn't have any sort of texture printed onto it. These decks are very odd on both models. The Hornby one is odd because the deck is separately fitted and you'll notice some of the rivets here look quite strange and that's because some of these rivets are holes where pins in the rest of the model stick up through the rivet to hold this top section on which just doesn't look very good, does it? That strikes me as maybe a newish designer thinking they're being clever by implementing this kind of design. Ultimately, it's overcomplicated and it doesn't look very good. They should not have tried to disguise the pins as rivets. Just put the pins on the underside if possible and mold the rivets properly. The Rapido decks don't look that great either because the rivets, instead of sticking out, are kind of inverted. Inverted rivets, if you will. Now, uh, I don't think that's a thing, is it? I mean, I'm not an expert on these in real life, and the photos don't show it either way. But uh, no, I've never seen inverted rivets like that before, so that's not particularly good. In terms of the rings along the chassis, both of these seem to be separately fitted, although the Rapido ones are much finer, which is good to see. On the ends of the model though, those little rings are just moulded on the Hornby ones, whereas the Rapido ones are separately fitted. But, as you can see, the Rapido ones stick out perpendicular to the chassis, whereas the Hornby ones fall down as they would under gravity. So the Hornby ones look more realistic, the Rapido ones are free to move, but as I tried to guide them down into position, one of them just broke off. So I'm not going to try and mess around with the rest. So we've got this situation where Rapido are making parts separately fitted, which is great. They stand out, they've got great relief, but they don't look that great as a result because they're in the wrong position and it breaks the model when you try to fit them into the right position. So there's really no advantage. In terms of the buffers, Hornby's Laureate does not have sprung buffers, which is fine, you know, models don't need sprung buffers. It's a relatively unnecessary feature, but at nearly £50 RRP, should this not have sprung buffers where other models do? On the Rapido model, the buffers are still not sprung, but these are made of plastic, so that's even worse. In terms of the underframe, the Rapido model is slightly more detailed in that we can still see the planking on the underside as well as the cross bracing. The Hornby version still has the cross bracing which looks great but there's no detail on the underside of the bed. So Rapido has it there and also on the brake rigging Rapido has it too. On the underside there's just a lot more detail on the Rapido version whereas the Hornby model just kind of stops where they think you can't see it. Rapido have gone all the way and then looking at the brake rigging from the top there's an awful lot more detail in Rapido's model. It looks like they've actually visited this thing and modeled it properly and as a result you can really see how the brakes would work on this thing. The Hornby version looks kind of like what the brake rigging looks like from a distance, but they don't quite look as good. You can't look at these and immediately see how the brakes work as you would on the Rapido version. The Rapido model has got visible glue in a couple of prominent places, whereas I must say I have not noticed anything like that on the Hornby version. 
In terms of the molded detail along the side of the Laureate, there's not a lot in it. Both of them have excellent riveting and they seem to match relatively closely. Yeah, can't really call it. Similar sort of story with the axle box detailing, really. Both of them look great, good quality molding, etc, etc. They do look slightly different because they've been painted into different colours, but ultimately I can't really call it. Both models have coupling hooks pre-fitted to the buffer beams, but neither model came with screw link or chain link couplings to fit onto those. Again, quite insulting given the price. So it's really, really hard to say which one I would prefer to have. Would you go for the Hornby one with the odd planking texture, the pins disguised as rivets, and the less convincing brake rigging, or the Rapido version with its gravity-defying rings, its slightly plasticier finish, and its inverted rivets. I really don't know. I guess I would go with the Rapido one overall because it is the more detailed of the two, but it's also the lighter, flimsier, and much more cheaply made of the two, so it's still unclear which one I would recommend. But there's still one more area where one of these models might pull ahead of the other, and that is, of course, performance. So let's get them onto the track, let's find out how the couplings work, let's see how free rolling they are, and let's see which one works the best. So here is my test setup for both of today's brand new wagons. I've selected a nice classic Great Western locomotive. This is British Monarch, a star class. And as well as the two laureates, I've also got some Oxford Rail wagons between them. I'm using Oxford Rail so that all of the couplings are going to be the same so that I can compare the results of the couplings. <clears throat> That's going to be interesting. But before we get on to that, let's talk about the free rolling test. Of course, wagons are not locomotives. They haven't got to propel themselves. They haven't got to haul trucks and coaches. All they've got to do is roll along freely, which seems quite simple. But for one of these two wagons, that was too much to ask for. Can you guess which one it was? Yeah, it was the Hornby one. Absolutely pathetic. Very, very stiff wheels couldn't even sustain a run down Gordon's Hill. Now, I know this model doesn't have the separate bearings, but that's no excuse. Plenty of rolling stock doesn't have separate bearings on it, and yet plenty of it performs better than this. So, Hornby want to charge £46.99 for a wagon that doesn't even roll freely. Typical Hornby, ludicrous as ever. Rapido's much, much better. Thanks to its proper bearings and free rolling wheels, what a luxury feature, this thing went much, much further, although noticeably as soon as it got to the curve, it did stop dead. I assume that's because these have a very long wheelbase, and so the flanges dig into the curves when it reaches the tighter ones. But that can't be helped. It would be far too complicated to make the axles sort of pivot and such. I'm glad they didn't do that. Okay, so besides rolling freely, the only other thing a piece of rolling stock has to do is couple up correctly. And yet, it seems Hornby's model has been designed specifically to fail at this task as well, because the couplings are not sprung. Honestly, who designs a long wheelbase wagon with pivoting couplings that don't spring back to the centre so that they can couple up to other things? Well, the answer is Hornby. So, I've not touched the couplings. I will, I think, have to move the couplings manually into the centre before they will work. But I've just put them down onto the track, as you do. And now let's try a coupling. So I'm going to reverse up and we'll see which wagon couples properly, which one doesn't. I'm assuming there will be one that works and one that doesn't. Let's find out. Okay, well, it's pretty clear immediately that both of the Hornby couplings failed because they are lolling off to one side and uh, both of the Rapido couplings worked. So you see, we've got this slight issue here. We've got one manufacturer who can make a wagon that is free rolling and couples up. And we've got another manufacturer who want to charge 20% more for a wagon that doesn't roll freely and doesn't couple up. Can you see a bit of a problem here? At least Hornby are consistent in their inadequacy. Right, so let's straighten up the couplings this time and just check to see whether they are at least at the right height. I'm not sure why I started shaking the wagon there. Perhaps it was just some sort of subconscious anger that I feel towards it. Right, let's try again. Let's see if this is going to work. Should do now. All right. Yep, yeah, it couples. So in a way, it's a damn good job you're not gonna be buying lots of these because if you had to go along your rake and straighten all the couplings before they would couple, that would be highly annoying. But needless to say, yeah, the way this model from Hornby performs is 
entirely inadequate. I cannot believe how uh, how poorly realised this is. In this day and age as well, you would have thought this would be most simple, but obviously it isn't. Okay, well, on the positive side, once the Hornby wagon is coupled, I can't see any reason why it should come uncoupled and start causing problems. So the two might be even again once we start running. So let's try this forwards direction. Let's just check how they get on around the rest of the track. Okay, here we go. And of course, any issues at all, and it's an immediate fail for whichever wagon responsible because this is just very basic stuff. But thankfully, it looks as though everything is okay around the track. Second radius curves, no problem. Up the incline, obviously no problem either, so that's great. In terms of the Hornby coupling situation, I don't know how multiple of these wagons would work in reverse, because if the couplings kind of turn away from each other on curves and such, would that cause issues? I'm not entirely sure. I only have one of them, so there's no way to tell, unfortunately but that is a potential problem. And uh, of course, you're not gonna be putting a massive rake of loads of these together, so that's not too much of a concern, but two existed in real life, so you could feasibly buy two and put them together. And would you get problems then? I'm not entirely sure, but with my setup at least, everything seems to be okay now that they are coupled. For now though, let's get them onto the points and just check how they perform there. Okay, again, zero forgiveness policy on this because this is very simple stuff. And, uh, you know, these are simple wagons. They're not bogeyed or anything. There's no pivoting axles or anything. So it should be reasonably simple for these to work properly. But do they? Let's see. Repeat up first. Yes. Hornby over next. Yes. Very luckily for Hornby, their model does seem to work on points, which should be the bare minimum, but after it failed on every other aspect of the performance. Um, I guess we should celebrate. Try a little bit faster and I'll open up this second set of points so that we've got two sets of points to go through. Okay, excellent. So both wagons are rock solid over points in both directions, forwards and backwards. Right, that's great. Let's do some ratings. Let's start with Hornby's then, and the level for detail here is a three star. I think the paintwork and the finish look absolutely great, and most of the detailing is fine as well, particularly nice riveting here. However, the brake rigging is incomplete. We've got no sprung buffers, no proper couplings to fit onto the hooks, and you've got those strange pegs that are masquerading as rivets holding parts of the model together. It's just an odd design, and it really distracts the eye and detracts from the model. The performance is a generous three star because once it's coupled up and running, it's absolutely fine and it does handle the points okay, but it's not at all free rolling and the couplings are not sprung, which means you can't couple anything to this without some sort of intervention. You have to make sure the couplings are straight manually. That's just ridiculous for how expensive this was. The quality though is quite good, probably the best aspect of the model, four star. Mostly die cast on this model, which is really great. It weighs an awful lot, twice as much as the Rapido. However, it doesn't have any bearings on its axles and the design is a little bit funny in places, like I say, with those rivets. The value for money though is a two star for me. I think with an RRP of £46.99 or a typical retailer price of around £42.29, this model should have been far more complex and feature packed than it is terrible value for money so overall that is 5.88 out of 10 or a grade of e yeah i think that's well deserved moving on to rapidos the level of detail is slightly better again it's got the great finish body and general detailing and the brake rigging is much better on rapidos which is why it gets a better score on detail than hornby's did Still got a few issues though, inverted rivets in places, not sure if that's accurate, but I can't imagine why it would be. You've got no sprung buffers, plastic buffers at that, and again, no proper couplings to fit onto the hooks. The performance though cannot be faltered, so it gets an extra two stars for this. Nice and free rolling, functioning couplings, works on the points, and is fine once coupled as well. The quality though is poorer than Hornby's in my opinion. This is only 20% cheaper than Hornby's and yet it weighs less than half as much. It's plastic and there's also visible glue on the model which is completely unacceptable. Speaking of the value then, I've given it the same as Hornby's because yes, this is much more cheaply produced but it is cheaper to buy as well by about 20%. 
ultimately I still don't think you get very much for your money. Overall then that is a slightly better score of 6.15 out of 10 but it is still an E. And into the logbook we go with Hornby's, theirs is 8th place above the Gresley Suburbans and below the Athen Hoppers. And then here comes Rapido's just above. Frankly, I don't really recommend either of these. I don't know if maybe both companies were rushing to try and get their model out first before the other. Not sure if that's true of Rapido because they did take a little bit more time over theirs and theirs has just come out. But Hornby's seem to come out very, very quickly, which is unlike Hornby, isn't it? In fact, it seems that the only time Hornby moves quickly on a model is when another manufacturer is producing the same one. Then all of the Chinese delays mysteriously disappear, as they did with this. Either way though, it's a shame because we've got two models, both of them mediocre, both of them overpriced, and at the end of the day we don't have a truly decent Laureate wagon to buy. Not that I think anybody's that desperate to own one because they are so obscure. So, probably one to avoid. If you must own a Laureate though, which one would I recommend? Well, the Rapido model has the higher score, so I say the Rapido one. It's less expensive and at the end of the day, once it's on the track, the plastic construction doesn't matter too much, the finish isn't too bad, and it does work absolutely perfectly. So while the extra metal and the extra weight on Hornby's is great to see, and I do prefer it over the light plastic construction, the Rapido one is the more detailed, isn't it? It has the better brake rigging, better underframe. There's certainly no reason to pay more for Hornby's for features that you don't really appreciate when the thing runs and you get a model with running issues and coupling problems as well. So it has to be the Rapido one if you really want to buy a Laureate. If you're not that desperate though, I wouldn't bother with either. Get an Oxford Pilchard or a Dapol Turbot. You will get a lot more for your money and you'll get quite a bit of change as well. Thank you very much for watching though, I hope you enjoyed this review, it was really interesting to see two different models of the same prototype. Which do you think is best? Have you decided to purchase any of these or are you giving them a miss as I recommend? Please do let me know your thoughts on that. For now though, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you next time with another review. Alright folks, you take care. Cheers everybody.